By this stage, the main functionality is in place, but there was a new feature added in Inkari 2.0 that will allow us to do some very interesting things visually with the use of masks. If you take a look in the Asset Manager, there should be a folder named Masks and Gradients. If we click and drag to select these assets and drag them into the scene, you will see that things suddenly look quite strange. If I hide all of the other assets by clicking the eye icon on each object, we can take a look at these individually. The first one is called Gradient, which gives us a nice gradual colour change between 0 and 220 on the speed meter. This sprite also has its own transparency information. The second one I want to discuss is the Mask Sprite. If you've ever used any computer graphics software, then you've probably encountered alpha masks. Basically, this is a black and white map that can be used to modify the transparency of other sprites. Essentially, this means that 100% white is fully opaque, while 100% black is fully transparent. With the grey tones in between being different levels of transparency based on that pixel's lightness. We will use this to alter the transparency of the gradient above, so that the speed needle leaves a nice trail effect which changes in colour as the needle rotates. The last one is another mask which we will use to affect the transparency of our scale sprite so that the visibility of the numbers will appear to be based on their proximity to the needle. So let's make all of these visible again apart from the masks. And this gradient effect is going to go under the needle and mini gauge here. So let's increase by one the sort index of the mini gauge needle and text. And then set the gradient sort index to three. Now before I start talking about masking, I just want to point out that there's also an attribute under Sprite called Opacity Map. If we click on the box here that says drag here, we can select a mask from our Assets folder. So if I select Mask.png here and enable Use Opacity Map, you can see that the mask has altered the transparency of the main graphic. This has its uses, however, when you transform the object in any way, you also transform the opacity map, which isn't what we want in this case. So let's remove this by clicking the delete icon here. And instead, if we go to the mask attribute category and click on the object attribute, we can select a sprite object from our actual scene. What this means is that we can transform the mask separately from the main graphic. Now if we make the mask visible and then rotate it, you can see that we are getting the desired effect. Now let's set the Z rotation back to zero and then select the speed scale object. Then we can click its mask object attribute and assign the scale mask sprite. But first we can also make this visible again by clicking the icon right here in the pop-up box. Also, if we enable the Invert Mask option, we can inverse the transparency. To get all of these things animating together now, I'm going to set the Needle Z rotation back to zero. And then right click inside the Scene Outliner and create a new object of a type that we haven't used yet called Group. And we will call this Rotating Object. Then we'll put the needle and the two masks inside the group by selecting them and then dragging them onto the rotating object group. Now, when we rotate the group, all of the graphics are rotated with it. So let's set the starting rotation back to minus 132 and then go back to the logic editor. Now here, on the object node which currently references the needle graphic, 
let's click its object attribute and switch this to our new rotating object group. Now when we play the project, we get a really nice gradient effect as the needle rotates. So that's all for the interactive elements of the speed meter. In the next videos, we'll be adding some more cosmetic effects to help improve the style of the speed meter and introduce some more advanced functionality.